I'm Abe, this is Kyle. We're gonna talk about how to create a shared standard for data quality, uh, in case anybody else wants to do that. We are currently engaged in creating a shared standard for data quality at Great Expectations, and most of this talk is going to be about community building, open source, just kind of how those pieces fit together. Um, let's dive in with quick introductions. Let's see, do we have a clicker? Yep, right there. Okay, I am not trained in the this use one. of this thing. <laughs> hey, okay, you push the button. I'm Abe, uh, data science, data engineer, or data scientist, data engineer by training. Uh, I've been doing that for almost 10 years out of grad school, and that includes a mix of work both in tech-first companies like Jawbone and also more kind of classic enterprise like Aspire Health. Um, I care a lot about the human-centric ethical use of data. I might talk about that a little bit more later if there's time. Uh, and in the meantime, core contributor for Great Expectations, CEO, co-founder at Superconductive, and uh, mid-pandemic move to Salt Lake City. Uh, just quick, quick show of hands. Who in the room has moved since the pandemic started? Okay, interesting. Uh, who, who moved from a relatively crowded place, like a city, to a relatively less crowded place, like a smaller city? Okay, yeah. I just, everybody's talked about this like great migration that's going on, and it's fun to actually like, be here in person. Um, and yeah, see a little bit of that. So uh, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, last thing to say is I've got three awesome kids, and um, my, my only regret about being at Data Council is that I don't get to be with them for a few days, but totally worth it to be back in person with this crowd. Kyle, over to you. Uh, so I'm Kyle, uh, Kyle Eaton, uh, user experience designer and uh, researcher, mostly in uh, pharma and uh, biotech. I'm a 500 Startups alumni, and I consider myself a startup Swiss Army knife. Uh, I'm a community manager for Great Expectations and a growth lead uh, for Superconductive. Uh, I actually did the opposite. I moved from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, Go Blue, to uh, Boston, and uh, instead of kids, I like pickling. Good substitution. <laughs> Better response, too. <laughs> All right, so uh, my job in this talk is to talk about why. Kyle is gonna talk about how. And again, our theme here is creating a shared standard for data quality. Um, again, quick show of hands. Who in the audience is familiar with Great Expectations as a library? This, okay. That's gratifying to see, I'll, I'll just say, because uh, we first presented Great Expectations publicly at Strata, I think four years ago. And at that point, zero people in the audience knew about it because we were announcing it. And then two years ago, we announced again, uh, kind of like the fact that we were pivoting the company to focus on development and commercialization of great expectations. And at that point, there was a smattering of people who knew about it, but you know, not everybody. We're, we're getting to the point where, I mean, this is, it is a thing that everybody knows about, and that's, that's really fun. So what we wanna talk about today is uh, two things. Uh, first, just to put it in context, is uh, why, why we are positioning great expectations as a shared open standard. Um, and then Kyle is gonna talk more about how, like what we're doing from a community building, community development perspective. Um, and just for a bit of context, uh, the library has now existed for four years. Uh, the community around it is one of the fastest growing communities in the data world. We have 6,000 some odd people in the Slack channel. Uh, I imagine there are a fair number of those people in the room here. Uh, we're now at the point where in a given month, Great Expectations will be downloaded more than four million times from PyPy every single month. Uh, and we just recently announced the closing of our Series B fundraise. So Great Expectations is here to stay. Uh, we are, as I said, starting to work on a commercial product that goes alongside open source. And because of that, we felt like Data Council would be a really good time and place to just make a clear statement about what we are doing from an open source perspective. So if you want to talk about Great Expectations Cloud and those things, sure, like we've got a booth, we can do that. But this presentation is about open source. Uh, where we've come from, where we're going. And for my section, for why, I'm gonna approach it in two pieces. One, I'm gonna start from the back. I'm gonna start like why data quality, like what's the value we're trying to create in the world there? And then from there I'll go to why a shared standard is a particularly good way of doing that. So, uh, like why data quality? Okay, good, it animates. I wasn't sure if this would animate. Um, we're, living through this interesting time where every organization is becoming a data organization, meaning the ability to pull in data and wrangle it and do that in a scalable way is just becoming a critical function for every organization that wants to move fast enough to keep pace with the rest of the world. 
Uh, we're building these nervous systems that help organizations think and act in concert. Uh, if you have time, uh, Tristan Handy from DBT has a great talk from Coalesce last year on uh, the jellyfish and the salamander that talks about different ways those nervous systems can be structured, different ways they can evolve. And I, I think a lot of what we're doing as data people is making it so that the organizations we work within can think and act in concert. When you get into the kind of granular nitty gritty of that, it's all DAGs, right? It's all pipelines. It's flows of data from source to destination with transformation and augmentation and like lots of other work in the middle. And uh, kind of the key point I'd make about data quality is this thing is, it, it's a supply chain, right? It's a supply chain for decision making or sometimes a supply chain for product features that are data driven. And in each case, you need to make sure that the supply chain has high quality, is secure at each step along the way. That doesn't necessarily mean you're like deploying great expectations tests at each step along the way, but it does mean that there needs to be a solid notion of like what is it supposed to be doing and can we guarantee that the, the supply chain does that at each stage. Uh, and then if you take the same thing and kind of turn it inside out, at each stage along the way there are different people who are working with that data. Um, I really liked Prokalpo's point from the, the last panel where she said that data is really a multi-stakeholder problem. There's no one person who has all of the context. You have to have lots of different people working together. And uh, so when I think about, like, practically speaking, what does that mean? Like, what, as I've done data work, what, what does that look like? There's a huge difference between working in an organization where people have lots of different expectations about data and where there's shared, unified expectations about data. Like, that, that's really, in many ways, kind of the, the heart of what it means to have high quality. I mean, quality is this very abstract term. When you, you look at the nuts and bolts of what does it take to guarantee it, it's making sure that different people agree on what should be happening and that the software system or the human system or like whichever systems it is that's processing that data, do that in a reliable, predictable, therefore high quality kind of way. So that, that's kind of the, the big why for this. Like we're going through this really interesting phase in um, human like technical evolution where it's possible to share information and make decisions on a much larger scale than you could before, but we haven't quite figured out how to do that in a, a systematically, consistently high quality way. Okay, so now I'm gonna do kind of like, almost like a victory lap in some cases of like all the things that we are either building or have built in great expectations that help do that from a technical perspective, help get to those shared expectations across an organization. Uh, and I'm gonna breeze, th I'm gonna touch on the, a few of these in more detail and then breeze through some of them uh, more quickly. So uh, the first is you need to have a support for a really broad vocabulary of expectations. Uh, I'm just gonna throw some of these up on the screen. Uh, all of these are real expectations that are a little bit, they're not the, the ones that people implement first, they're the ones that start to get more into the nooks and crannies of specific problems. Um, at this point we've got something like 80 live expectations and plans for that to go at, at least into low hundreds pretty soon. Um, and the reason that why we're doing that is as people express what they think and what they believe about data, it's really important to be able to have a language that matches with them, that follows along. Um, overall, and this is one of the, the trends that we're seeing that is probably good for people to, to just kind of also echo, we'd love to get feedback from others. Uh, I'm seeing this progression from kind of engineering centric concerns around data quality. So like, does this column exist? Um, or is it ever nullable? Um, d does the value go outside a fixed range? To things that are more statistical and also more semantic. Starting to say not just, hey, does this column match a certain regex, but uh, is that regex an email address? Oh, is that, is that email address the email address of a paying customer? Are they in our database? Did they churn recently? Starting to get semantic understanding at that level um, is, I, I think, a big part of where this is going to go next. So broad vocabulary. Uh, a second one is facilitating communication across lots of teams. So the, the last time that we were at Data Council, we announced this notion of compile to docs. The idea that in great expectations, um, this language isn't just a technical language of assertions about data, it's also uh, a human language where you can turn all of your tests into documentation uh, and, and your docs or tests and those things can move in lockstep. And as we've kind of watched the evolution of that over the last couple years, uh, we've, it's gotten more nuanced. And to give an example of that, let me kind of put a few examples of different ways that you could take the same expectation and express them with these kind of like different twists on grammar. So there's a descriptive version, like what is happening in the data right now. There's also a prescriptive version, like what do you believe should be happening in the data? 
Uh, there's a question, which is, okay, like, okay, what is the data doing? There's an answer, and then there's a diagnostic version, which is, here's what I expect, here's what actually is happening. Uh, if those line up, everything's good. If those don't line up, then, oh, wait a minute, like, something should happen here. We need, we need to go back and fi figure out why that, you know, why does the world not align with expectations there? So it's a subtle thing, and it's, you know, it's just grammar, but when you, I, I put it to you that if you uh, sit in data meetings with people and watch how they talk about data and how they ask questions, you'll see all five of these different formats show up. And if you watch really closely, you can actually use this as sort of a window into where in the life cycle of establishing shared expectations is a team. So being able to produce all of these kinds of things is like an interesting and I think a pretty powerful part of what we're doing with this shared library of great expectations. Um, it, what it does, in my view, is takes what would be a purely technical tool and elevates it to actually be able to help with communication. Uh, and again, the, the job is to get many people on the same page, so communication's got to be part of that. Okay, uh, a few more and then I'll get out of the technical stuff pretty quickly. Uh, consistent execution across many kinds of infrastructure. Uh, so when Great Expectations started, we were focused initially on Python pandas and notebooks. We then expanded pretty quickly to also be able to do SQL. Uh, and from there, we actually had community contributions that pull us into the world of Spark. Uh, we're not officially doing Dask yet, but we have people who are using it that way. Um, and, and lots of other uh, s specific SQL dialects and backends. And this notion that you can have tests that mean something, like they're semantically meaningful, they help kind of hold a team's expectations together, but they're not tightly, tightly coupled to specific infrastructure, that actually turns out to be really important for, for two reasons. One, you often have data that flows across lots of different pieces of infrastructure, uh, and it's not going to be expressed in the same language all the way. So you could have uh, data ingestion that's going through S3 and uh, Spark and Glue, and then you could have work going on in a, in a data warehouse, and then you could have work going on after that in um, Python and notebooks and, and Dask and things like that. And so being able to have shared expectations about the data that flow through all of those uh, becomes a really important uh, capability. Um, on top of that, uh, especially as we start to see more big enterprise users of great expectations, many of those are coming uh, they still have scars from the lock-in era where you know, big vendors would sell a monoth monolithic solution and it was really hard to switch out. It's really nice to have the notion of uh, tests and logic that aren't deeply, deeply coupled to whatever database or backend you're tied to at the moment. So that's another thing. It's one of these things where having a shared library, having um, shared implementation is really helpful because no one team is ever going to implement all of those things, but the tool is much more useful when it can become this shared language across all of those. Uh, and on top of that, there are other things. So there's, there's usability, there's uh, assistance with EDA and data profiling, performance, um, just setting up your production system. All of those are things where, uh, I, I put it to you, like this is a conference of tool builders. This is not stuff that needs to be reinvented. It's like once it's built and built well once, um, it makes a lot more sense to integrate with that and uh, make sure the value from that system goes to a lot of other places rather than having to build and rebuild and re-rebuild. All right, so bringing that back together. Uh, I said earlier that it's all about creating shared expectations. The way that you create shared expectations, and, and I don't mean in a technical sense, I mean in like a very human anthropological sense, is by sharing tools and sharing community. And um, there is no better way to build shared tools than open source. Open source is such a good way to build software that works really, really well and works well in lots of places. There's also no other way to build a shared language than have an open community. And by that, I don't mean specifically like the Great Expectations Slack community. I mean the broader community that's here. Um, all of the people who are building tools together and collectively having this conversation about where the data ecosystem goes. Time check. Oh, sorry, that's louder when I look down. Um, <laughs> we started a little bit late. I, there was one slide I was going to put in. I, I'm gonna do it. Um, so we, we don't have the slide in here, but I, I wanna make sort of like a moral ethical appeal to the crowd really briefly, because uh, this is a thing that I care about. Um, I think professionally, most of us are engaged with building these kinds of shared nervous systems within specific companies. Uh, but we're actually living in a period where the same sort of problems exist on a whole social scale. 
So like basically every democracy in the world right now is struggling with at, at least two, two things that come out of, kind of today's information technology. One is it's really hard for us collectively to share facts, um, just like as a body politic, agreeing just on what has happened or why things are happening or like just the basics of like what is happening. Uh, that's gotten harder somehow in the last several years. And the kinds of information systems that we're building within companies should at least in principle be able to help with that broader problem. Um, similarly, we have a lot of systems that become extremely non-transparent and they're therefore are hard to have democratic accountability for them in, in the ways that we've typically thought about that. And uh, I, I'm not a techno-utopian. I don't believe that you know, we're going to invent a data system that suddenly makes democracy you know, 10x democracy because blockchain. <laughs> like that, I, I don't think that uh, purely technical solutions will work for, uh, for human problems. But I do think that the craft that we're building of helping helping groups of people get on the same page about stuff. That's the thing that has social implications that are bigger than any one company. And um, part of the conversation that I hope we can have at Data Council is how do we help foster that with the kinds of tools that we're building. Okay, so snuck one extra one in there. <laughs> Kyle, let me hand it off to you to talk about how. Thanks, Abe. All right, so how we're gonna do this um, folds perfectly into our mission to build and support uh, an active community of data practitioners. Um, I'm happy to say that we've had uh, a lot of really great success with building this community of data practitioners. Uh, we've covered most of the globe uh, with more than half of our community existing outside of the North American region. Uh, we have over 6,500 Slack members in our community and over 13,000 people uh, in our community we consider GitHub activity. Uh, we have 258 contributors, and we recently crossed 4 million monthly PyPy downloads. So last month was 4 million downloads, which is amazing. Uh, so how are we going to continue to foster this rich community of data practitioners and translate it into building the open and shared standard of data quality together? So I'm gonna go over a few uh, major points and how we'll achieve this, uh, starting with these two. Um, regular community meetings and interacting in Slack, uh, and then a much faster turnaround time for contributors. Uh, since raising our Series B, we've de dedicated more resources into our community. Um, I've been putting together a team of uh, developer advocates so, and, and technical writers. We now have five developer advocates. We have a technical writer and then myself as the community manager. Um, you'll probably notice, actually, that there's more activity in our Slack uh, in the past couple months. Um, and that's because of this team uh, that we've been putting together has been uh, fostering good conversation and interacting much more uh, with our community and we see a lot more liveliness in our community today. So with this team, uh, we not only put more effort into supporting our community events, uh, Slack conversations, GitHub issues, merging PRs, but thanks to community feedback, we've been building and enhancing our documentation along with creating some tooling to empower our contributors to make an impact on the project. Uh, and in the spirit of celebrating community contributions, we built the expectations gallery to uh, show off these amazing contributions while making our expectations easier to discover. And um, one thing you'll notice in fostering our community and like what we've been doing to build it is implementing a sort of positive feedback loop, which I feel is really important for a great community. We wanna highlight all of the positive momentum that happens, whether it be something small to something big, it could just be sharing an article in the community, um, it could be answering someone else's question or fixing a little piece of documentation to bringing in like a big feature or a major integration. So speaking of a positive feedback loop and where we do it, um, our uh, community meetups are awesome. Uh, and it's a great place for us to celebrate our community and, and give some insights into the product. So in our community meetups, uh, we spend some time going over the product roadmap to maintain transparency. We highlight community contributions to the project, uh, celebrate others who are, who are helping, celebrate people who are helping others in Slack. Uh, we also highlight interesting conversations around data quality opportunities to collaborate and opportunities to give feedback on upcoming features. So started using GitHub discussions as a place to gain feedback on uh, upcoming features, whether they're in a PR or just being discussed. So our community show and tells are an awesome opportunity for people in the community to show off their use case of great expectations or share an article that they've authored in the data quality space. Um, 
we love highlighting other people's work uh, that they're proud of, and I'm really happy to say that we created a platform for others to do that. So if you want to promote your content in one of our community events or maybe in our newsletter, whether it's uh, your use case of great expectations or it's uh, you know, uh, an article in the space, uh, feel free to reach out to me, Slack, email, or if you're here, uh, be at the uh, booth. So the third major step uh, is going to be highlighting, uh, sorry, it's going to be a highly streamlined process for uh, getting contributions over the line quickly, uh, and then also the expectations gallery. So the uh, expectations gallery, which is something that's live now, it's uh, greatexpectations.io slash expectations. You also see it in the header of our, of our site. Um, is, it's a place where users of Great Expectations can discover all the existing expectations created by the core team as well as the community. Uh, it not only highlights the contributors of individual expectations, which you can see uh, on the right side is a specific uh, expectation with a list of uh, contributors who help create that specific expectation or just add some properties to it. Um, but it also highlights opportunities to contribute to the project itself um, so you'll notice places where contributions can be made. Um, so you can see actually, uh, or you know, create an expectation that doesn't exist yet. So you can see on the left side is going to be, is is the list of all the expectations. Show some high, uh, attributes at a high level. Um, so you can see you know what level of readiness is it in from production, beta before that, experimental before that. Uh, what data sources uh, support the expectation? Um, and then on the right side, your, your detailed view, description, uh, doc string, which is the next slide, and then uh, some tests as well and, and example data. So feel free to check that out. Look for opportunities to, to contribute or create your own. So in the uh, spirit of building this gallery, something new and exciting uh, that's happening is the introduction of expectation packages. So packages are a group of expectations uh, made to be the standard of data quality in its category. Uh, the purpose of these packages are to enable data practitioners to surface tests for their specific data quality needs in bulk. So when an individual is working with geo, finance, pharma, uh, PII, some, dealing with semantic types, um, maybe they're creating something where they want to ensure ethical AI and they want tests for that, uh, they can come to the expectation gallery and grab the package that's relevant to them. And hopefully in the spirit of open source, they then can contribute back to the package with some of the expectations that they found that they needed for those specific needs. Um, so here you can actually see uh, a mock-up of uh, the first expectation package uh, that we have uh, made by the team at Capital One, uh, led by Taylor Turner as an expert of the package. So the role of the expert is to help build a blueprint for the expectation package uh, and to help establish it as that standard for the category. So it's also someone that can monitor the progress of that uh, package and ensure that it's, it's maintaining its, its uh, uh, level of standard. So we're doing a hackathon right now to accelerate the growth of these packages. Um, right now, the uh, packages that we're working on are semantic types, ethical AI, and geospatial packages. Uh, we have $15,000 in prizes, plus some very unique swag for, uh, for the people who participate. Um, and there's also some really easy opportunities to participate at our booth to help you get jump-started for a chance at, at those prizes. So go check it out. Uh, the hackathon's running till April 6th, so plenty of time. Well, actually, it's not that much time to uh, jump in. Uh, and also, I mean, beyond just the cash prizes, you, your name will be forever attached to these expectations uh, and the packages that you contribute to. Uh, so there's more information at the booth for the hackathon, but my call to action uh, to you is that we're seeking experts for the packages uh, to help us design the blueprint, create the standard for these categories. So if you're passionate about ethical AI, geo, semantic types, or you know, maybe one of the categories I mentioned earlier or a category I haven't mentioned yet that, that you're passionate about and feel you have an expertise, uh, I would love to have you featured in the gallery um, and then also come to one of our community events to talk about it. So again, you, know that you should know the drill now. Say hello to me at the booth, email me, or say hello on Slack.
So the last major step uh, in supporting the community is hands-on integrations with ecosystem partners. So in order for us to consider great expectations to be the open and shared standard of data quality, we need to work with all the relevant tools that help enable data practitioners. Uh, so that's why e data ecosystem partnerships have become a major focus for us at Superconductive and uh, the developer relations team. We've already had some success in growing the ecosystem partners across some key categories uh, in the data stack. We've partnered with uh, data orchestration tools such as Flight, and Dagster, Prefect, Astronomer, uh, data catalogs such as Atlin and Data Hub, uh, synthetic data with Ydata, interactive notebooks with DeepNote, Data Ops OS with Meltano, uh, and Databricks. And there's some really cool stuff with Databricks coming soon. Uh, if you come to our monthly community events, you'll almost certainly see uh, one of these demos. Uh, and you can also catch them on YouTube if you haven't seen them yet. Uh, and we also maintain the, uh, we really want to maintain that pace of having these integration ecosystem partners coming in frequently. Uh, so to ensure that we do maintain that pace, uh, we've added an integration section to help other tools integrate with uh, great expectations while documenting for future users. So you can check that out in our documentation along with uh, other of uh, the companies that have integrated with us. So if you're a tool in the data space that would like to integrate with great expectations, again, email me, booth, Slack. Um, and uh, I hope all of you know this reference of, I've never, I've never seen this many Power Rangers, but I was very excited to use this photo when I found it. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. It's really fun just to see, I mean, how far we've come as a community and uh, talk a little bit more about where we're going next. Um, I'm going to recap briefly, and then we'll save some time for Q&A at the end. Uh, so first, oh man, the, the slide, it's off. Uh, OK, every organization is becoming a data organization. Uh, and every link in that supply chain needs some concept of, of data quality. Uh, when you think about like, really what is data quality, it's getting uh, those shared expectations, creating shared expectations about how that nervous system works. And when you think about what it takes to get there, you need shared tools, you need shared language. That's, that's the job that we are trying to fill in the ecosystem, to become uh, a universal shared language, uh, or shared standard, if you like that better, uh, for, for data quality. It's going well so far. Um, it's one of the fastest growing data communities in the world, and we're excited to keep that going. We have a lot of specific ways that you can get involved. So if you have something cool related to data quality, related to great expectations, we would love to host you at a community meetup. Uh, and I say related to great expectations, definitely emphasis on the related there. Like the thing that has made a lot of the best presentations in this forum has been people who have like ingenuity and ideas of their own that happen to tie into what we're doing, but that expand the creative surface area a, a lot. Um, as a second thing, uh, if you want to get more directly involved in the creation of this library, we would love to get your help expanding that vocabulary of expectations, uh, being able to express more things and test more things and turn them into documentation. There's a lot of work to be done there. Um, there there's a lot of surface area. So come get involved, whether that's the hackathon or something else. Uh, and then finally, since this, uh, this is very much a conference of tool builders, uh, if you are building one of those tools, and you want to integrate, and you want to help demonstrate how data quality can be part of what you're doing, uh, please talk to us, because uh, we really do want to make it so that our tools uh, and the metadata and all that kind of the useful workflows that come out of that can be deeply integrated with every other part of the data ecosystem. Um, if you were here an hour ago, uh, there was a great conversation about uh, it should, like, what should the one pane of glass for data be? Um, like, what, what's the one metadata, metadata system to rule them all? And I, I think the consensus was there isn't one, right? There are going to be a lot of different places where people have to work, a lot of different stakeholders who have to work together in order to get uh, their data systems working. And we want the information about data quality that we can encode and share to flow to all of those other places. So that's what we're working on. That's kind of our statement about what comes next for Great Expectations as an open source project. Uh, we are deeply, deeply committed to open source and community building, and uh, hope that comes through, and hope that we can find ways to work together. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.